a polynomial p is given. We will factor this polynomial by finding the roots. So we will begin by setting the polynomial equal to zero. Now we will realize that we are missing the x squared term. So we will rewrite this with zero written as the coefficient on x squared. Then we will find all of the possible factors for the constant term at the end, negative four. Those factors would be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and plus or minus four. Then we will find all of the possible factors for the leading coefficient, which would be plus or minus one. Then we will find all of the possible rational roots for the polynomial by finding all of the possible ratios of p over q. And this would be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four. So we will choose one of these factors and perform a synthetic division. So we will try negative two to begin. We will write the coefficients for the polynomial out to the right of negative two, leave a space and draw a line. We drop the one underneath the line, then multiply minus two times one. This gives us minus two. Add and we have minus two. Now multiply minus two times minus two and that gives us positive four. Add and we have two. Now multiply negative two times two, that gives us negative four, which is negative eight. We are looking for a zero in this position. So we'll try another value. We'll try two this time. So we have two and then the coefficients again. One, zero, negative two, negative four. Leave a space and draw a line. Drop the leading coefficient under the line, so we'll bring the one down. Now multiply two times one to get two. Add, and we have two. Multiply two times two, and we have four. Add, and we have two. Multiply two times two, we have four. Add, and we have zero. So by finding this zero in this last position, we know that we have found a factor for the polynomial. Or in other words, we have found a root, and this root would be two. We can now factor x squared plus two x plus two, which is obtained from the coefficients in the bottom row of our synthetic division whenever we get a zero in the end, meaning no remainder. We can complete the square with this by first setting equal to zero and then subtracting two from both sides. We leave this space because we are going to write in that space the value that will complete the square on the left. We take the coefficient on the x term, which is two, divide it by two and square it. So this will be one squared, which is one. We will add one on the left in the space and compensate for that change by adding one to the other side also. Now we have completed the square on the left and we can rewrite it as x plus one squared. This will be equal to negative one when we add negative two plus one. Now we can use the square root property and take the square root of both sides and we have to remember to apply the plus or minus on the right. Now we have x plus one equals plus or minus and the square root of negative one is just i. Now we'll subtract one from both sides and we have x equals minus one plus or minus i. Here are our other two roots. So our roots are two and negative one plus or minus i. But we are to write this in its factored form. So we would do that by writing x minus two and then x minus each of these factors minus one plus i, and then x minus negative one minus i. Now notice that we have a negative in between x and the root in each case, and then we have each of the roots written in parentheses. It is important that these parentheses are applied. Now we can eliminate these parentheses 
and simplify these factors a little, and we wind up with x minus 2 times x plus 1 minus i times x plus 1 plus i. Now we have factored this polynomial.